In the previous video, we showed you how the spritz tube is used for intubation with a video laryngoscope. Now we'll describe another possible method, using a rigid type endoscope, like this video styled by Storz, that has a rigid body and a flexible tip that can be bent up to 90 degrees. Consider that this type of instrument is impossible to introduce through a laryngeal mask, as the shape of the mask itself wouldn't allow it. So this is a very important advantage of the spritz tube compared to other supraglottic devices. Another essential aspect is that the intubation procedure with the video stylet will be performed without interrupting the ventilation of the patient. The instrument will pass through the T-mount with the ventilation circuit constantly connected, which enables us to prolong the maneuver for as long as needed because we are relaxed knowing the patient is being ventilated. The obvious implication of this advantage is that it gives the opportunity to train the operators to improve and to refine their video-assisted intubation skills, since this method has a notoriously higher learning curve. And as I said before, contrary to all the other supraglottic airway devices that don't allow to use rigid video endoscopes, spritz tube is compatible with such instruments and allows their usage for both diagnostic and intubation purpose. First, don't forget to lubricate the instrument so that it may slide easily inside the tube. Next, introduce it through the T-mount. Let me pause here for a second just to show you that the ventilation is still maintained, as you can judge by the mannequin's lungs and the pressure waveforms on the monitor screen can also be checked. OK, keep pushing the instrument till you pass the spritz tube's tip. Point the video stylet upwards to visualize the vocal cords. Our patient is still being well ventilated. Approach the vocal cords with the video stylet and enter the trachea. At this point, deflate the proximal cuff completely. The video stylet will serve you as a guide to place the spritz tube into the trachea. So the cuff is deflated, we are still seeing the trachea. Push the spritz tube down along the instrument's shaft. The video assistance allows us to check the tube's correct placement. Now you can remove the video stylet and proceed with reinflating the proximal cuff that is now sitting in the trachea with the help of a pressure gauge. In this way, we check the cuff is not leaking and no damage has been done to the patient's tissues. Finally, if needed, we can deflate and remove the esophageal cuff.